Well, good afternoon, everyone. It is Sunday, um, kind of mid-afternoon here. Wanted to get on and do a video. There's a lot of discussion about this quiet weather pattern that's setting up and the possibility that is storm chase season or tornadoes, or are they done for the year? Uh, do we have to wait until 2024 now? And did want to take a look at that while I don't know that any of us can have the exact answer here today. I think the likelihood that tornado season is just done, we're only May 14th today. I think that's a little bit too soon. And I think there's going to be plenty more severe weather opportunities and certainly tornadoes here still to come. So let's take a look at the overall pattern. This gives us an idea of the visible satellite um, just kind of over the United States right now. We can see a couple different things. We do have a chance of some severe weather here across kind of the Midwest, uh, Missouri, Illinois, maybe Southern Iowa here today. We also have some, some flooding and some significant rainfall that's been occurring really from about the Gulf Coast around Houston um, up into the Dallas Fort Worth area here over the last day or two. And so not significant flash flooding as the concern was, especially across North Texas, but certainly in South Texas and in the Houston area, um, still seeing some considerable rainfall there. And then you can see kind of the spin in the atmosphere here. We do have a, a little bit of a, a system moving through kind of the Nevada and Pacific Northwest area here. But overall, certainly looking at a pretty quiet weather pattern to come at least over the next probably seven, if not uh, maybe 10 days here moving forward, which is a little bit unique for mid-May. Typically, May is that period of the most tornadoes and severe weather. Uh, we've definitely had a, a, an active last couple of days, but it does look like it's going to quiet down. And so what I'm going to look at here is this is the, the GEFS. So this is an ensemble model. And so what that means is it's not just one single weather model. This takes a kind of a collection of several different weather models models and kind of groups them together to give us sort of an average look. Instead of choosing just one solution, we want to kind of try to get an average or a mean of the different solutions so that we get something that's kind of in the middle, not the outlier that's the most quiet, not the outlier that's the most significant, but kind of somewhere in the middle to give us an idea of what should we expect. Now, anytime that we look at these longer range weather models, they're just honestly as much science as has been done and as good as these weather models are when we get out 10 plus days they're just honestly they're not super accurate so again uh, no guarantees do these models present but certainly just gives us an idea of just an overall pattern kind of what the information tells us today looking out into the future over the next couple of weeks and so what we can see here this is the upper level map again our 500 millibar winds this is kind of an idea of where the jet stream is setting up and so again, what we can see here, this is basically showing here today, this morning, we've got kind of this system across Oklahoma and Texas, giving us some of that significant rainfall and even some flooding. We do have a chance of some severe weather here. We've got our kind of spin in the atmosphere here across the Pacific Northwest. And then the majority of our jet stream kind of way up here um, across a lot of kind of not only Canada, but also the Northeast. And so not a whole lot of significant flow across the United States. And that's going to be somewhat of our issue here moving forward. And so when we go forward in time here, what we can see here is that anywhere that we see these uh, more highlighted colors, whether it's green, yellow, red, this is really the majority of our upper level flow here. And it's significantly north of where we would expect it to be around this time of the year. Typically, we're going to see it across kind of the middle United States. So it certainly is a little bit of an abnormal pattern here. And as we move forward really across time, we see a little bit of the jet stream kind of moving across the Midwest and the Northeast. But much of the plains, the, the West, the Pacific Northwest, really were in this kind of ridged pattern where we have kind of some high pressure that's setting up here with this big ridge really across much of the western half of the United States. And that's not a pattern that you want to see for significant severe weather. As we move forward in time, again, we really see almost no reprieve from this big kind of high pressure system that's going to be setting up across. We've got some flow here and then back across. But again, Southern Plains, Central Plains, even up in the Northern Plains, really not a lot of flow. And we've got this big ridge of high pressure that's going to be setting up here. So that's definitely not what you want to see for severe weather. And again, this goes out. This is showing all the way to the very end of May, May 30th. So again, looking at this kind of ensemble model certainly isn't painting a great picture for severe weather chances here 
over the coming couple of weeks. Now, certainly th that's an issue if you want to see significant severe weather outbreaks, but again, models this far out, even as far as the science has come, they still just aren't super accurate here. Uh, 10 days, two weeks ago, everyone was talking about the death ridge setting in. Um, early May was going to have hardly any severe weather. And yet we've had multiple days of severe weather and lots of tornadoes uh, across Oklahoma and Nebraska and Iowa and other places as well. So again, things will change. And so I wouldn't you know, take this as, as gospel by any means. One thing that I think is a little bit interesting to see um, to kind of visualize how accurate weather models are today versus days or weeks in the future. This is what's called the spaghetti plot. And so this looks at kind of that pattern with some of those upper level winds and how much consistency in each individual line that you see here, that's associated with some sort of wind field. And so obviously we can see that if we're talking about today, well, these lines are really, really close to one another. There's hardly any disagreement because this is what the weather looks like today. So there's considerable accuracy. But as we move further out in time, and let's say we get you know, to next weekend, for example, we can see that there's overall consistency in these patterns, like where the jet stream will be, but those lines aren't very close to one another in this, what we call spaghetti plot. And so that does start to show that there is from one model run to the next or one model to the next, there does start to become more variability. And we're only about a week out from right now. Now, obviously when we go, let's say we go to maybe about two weeks out, well, now we see that even though there's overall somewhat consistency between the red, the green, the blue, and kind of what area of the screen they're in, well, now these lines are not very close to one another at all. And so this starts to show that basically by the time you get out to say about two, two and a half, three weeks out, it's basically looks like a massive plate of spaghetti. There's noodles all over the place. And that just goes to show there's not that much consistency, not that much of a guarantee when you get further out. So again, a lot of these predictions that everything's over, tornado season's completely done, I think those are probably overblown, certainly just looking at the upper level pattern. Now, is it gonna be a quiet next week? That does look pretty likely, but again, we're in the middle of May, there's still a lot of storm season to come. I think another thing that we can kind of look at is if we look at just one single model, so the GFS model, for example, and we do look at something like moisture can be uh, a pretty good ingredient that you need for severe weather. What we can see here is that this model is showing us that when we move out in time, that let's say, you know, again, going into maybe next weekend, we're still going to have 60 degree dew points across Oklahoma and Texas. We're going to have a little bit of this cold front kind of moving across here. And as we move forward in time, we see that continue to kind of progress across kind of the Midwest and the Southern Plains. So going into next weekend, maybe Thursday, Friday, Saturday, could we see some pockets of more isolated severe weather? I, I, I think that is probably likely. Is it going to be a big outbreak, anything like that? No, I don't think so. But we're going to have moisture in place across the Southern Plains, maybe the Mississippi Valley of the Arklatex as well. We're going to have this front, so we have some added forcing for severe weather. Um, so again, I think that that's something that we'll probably see some more, you know, marginal kind of isolated days. And then even looking out again, this is, you know, looking out to May 24th. You know, we've got 60 degree dew points all the way up to the Canadian border across much of the kind of central plains in the Midwest. Could we see some isolated severe weather here again? An outbreak, uh, maybe that's not likely, but severe weather, absolutely that could happen. So again, this is just looking at one model, the GFS. But again, this model's painting a picture of absolutely the ingredients would be in place for some severe weather. It's not that we're never going to see severe weather in tornadoes until 2024, for example. So um, I thought that that was kind of helpful. The last thing that I, I will touch on, um, this is something that does go around um, some of the weather community from time to time. I'll see this on Twitter and there'll be a lot made of this. This is kind of what's called the chiclets. And so this looks at various weather models and kind of when is there higher probabilities for potential severe weather days looking out over the next couple of weeks. And so what this basically shows us is these lighter colors, whether it be you know yellow, orange, red, that shows a more significant probability of severe weather given these data points that are in this model. And so this white line that stretches kind of right, right here, this white line right here, this shows where we are today. Um, then what this shows is when was that model run? And so the date and time goes up, here's today, 
uh, on May 14th. And then this looks from today, May 14th, out to almost the end of June here. And so what we can see here is that if the model is being run today on May 14th, and we're looking at you know these next couple days, these next 10 days, these blue colors mean that models really aren't showing much of a chance of severe weather. And, th and that would really line up with what we've seen looking at the long range pattern. So again, these next week, 10 days, there's not gonna be a whole lot of opportunities for significant severe weather. But again, looking at a model run that was today and looking out over those next couple of weeks, you know, we start to see some of these, you know, better opportunities, some of these yellow and greens and, you know, getting up close to that kind of, you know, yellow to orange, not anything significant, but certainly more of that little hints that there could be some severe weather days. And, you know, when we look at some of these previous model runs over the last week and you look out in time, again, consistency that nothing in the short run is going to happen, but lots more of these, you know, lighter oranges, reds, greens, which would, again, kind of signal the opportunity for severe weather out into the future. Again, nothing that's incredibly encouraging looking at this, but is it all blue like we see here in the very short run? Well, certainly not. And again, there's going to be severe weather. There's going to be tornadoes more in, in May, certainly in June. Um, th that's going to happen. So again, I don't think tornado season is canceled by any means. It's going to be quiet. It's going to be difficult if you plan to chase Cation or you're on a tornado tour and you're wanting to see weather. It's it's going to be challenging here over the next week. It may be more of a sightseeing tour than a, a tornado tour. But is there going to be severe weather on a couple days in the next week? Absolutely. There are going to be more significant severe weather events later on uh, in May and going into June. Uh, absolutely. I really have no doubts on that. So hopefully this is a little bit of a helpful video, just looking at that pattern, looking at is tornado season canceled? And again, I would say that the answer is certainly not. Maybe quiet here for the next you know couple days to the next week, but certainly we're going to see more severe weather and tornadoes to come. So hope everybody has a good uh, Mother's Day here today, and then certainly a good start to the week here moving forward. And hopefully we'll start to see weather models give us some little bit more signs of hope for the future here, and hopefully the not too distant period to come. So hope everybody has a good day and I'll see you for the next video.